company come from from 10 years ago to now? What's the growth, the sales, your markets, yeah. things of that nature? Yeah. Well, the growth has been fairly steady, although, you know, it's kind of mirrored uh, the markets uh, as a whole. Uh, has gone, I would say, without a doubt, adding the uh, R66 to the lineup, having a, uh, a turbine helicopter, we are moving more towards a commercial end as opposed to just a private owner end. Although, obviously, they our private owners are a sweet spot and something that we, we, we love and the enthusiast and all the training. But it, it certainly has expanded us uh, much more where people now doing a lot of agricultural work, doing a lot of tour work, a lot of things, both with the 44 and the 66. So I've just seen it as the company has evolved around the world that we're, uh, we are becoming much more uh, commercially oriented rather than just private oriented. Where are some of your uh, overseas markets at? Well, we, we export about 70% of our uh, of our aircraft. 70%? Um, 70%, yeah. And, you know, a market that's been very strong the last uh, couple years has been uh, um, South America, uh, Brazil in particular, but, you know, not just Brazil, Argentina, Chile, uh, uh, you know, Mexico, all throughout there. The overseas uh, customers, what sorts of industries are these in? outside of the personal use aircraft? A lot of it is the farm and agricultural work, and that, I mean, everything from cattle herding, uh, but then also crop spraying, um, you know, and just, you know, somebody's got a thousand acre farm, and just to, uh, to be able to traverse it, to get from one end to the other, that's very popular. A lot of tour work that goes on all over the place, which, you know, you can expand tour work to include survey and, and all the things, you know, power line patrol and all, all those type of things that, that need to be done uh, on there. Uh, obviously, there's, uh, you know, what I always refer to as 135 work, where in other words, I'm, I, need, I need to be picked up at one location and dropped off to another. Now, in the past 10 years, we talked about it earlier, the technology. Talk about what technologies What's, what's happening in the industry, especially as it relates to Robinson's uh, aircraft. Yeah, that was one of the, the biggest things that I would say that's kind of happened since 2010. Obviously, we put a turbine helicopter on the market, but this whole transition that has occurred to go from an analog market to a digital market. And so now you have, and, and to do that, it gives you um, a lot more information. Uh, obviously, you know, companies like Garmin and Aspen have done just wonderful jobs of of uh, putting the information out there and, and making it uh, easier for the pilots to fly so they can get the information instantaneously. But it, it also will enhance and does enhance safety by having that information. You know, even simple things like our max throttle light so that now you get a warning before you uh, run out of throttle, you know, as you're flying in higher altitudes and stuff. So, but that that is something that has been a slow march and we kind of did the, the biggest pushover in about 2014, uh, as we started switching instruments over uh, on there, and but it's really important that when a person gets in an aircraft, and they don't, you know, maybe they get in a 2018 aircraft, when they look at that that airspeed indicator, uh, or the uh, the altimeter, or the ARP, you know, the tachometer, um, they shouldn't know whether or not that's an analog or a digital instrument. Uh, you, you want that, that feel and the familiarity to all be the same. And that's a lot of work. And it's one of those things people are like, well, you haven't done anything. And you're like, well, that's perfect. That means that you don't realize what we've been working on. Um, and we are doing that transformation as we go on and as we continue. But what that allows you to do now is now you have things like autopilot, SAS systems. Um, and like I say, there's a wealth of information. So now instruments can talk to each other. You can have onboard computers that can give you that information and, and make certain that everything is uh, is proper for you. If you uh, if you look back in the 80s, the R22 became the most popular helicopter in production, and we actually had periods of time where we produced almost 500 in one year. And then in the 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, 44 came along, and it took over that post, which it it is held uh, for a long time. When you especially when you can that are all models, it's still the strongest selling helicopter. But now you have the 66, and it is, uh, um, it is doing quite well. And actually last year for the first time, the R66 in uh, 
total sales was larger than the Raven 2, which is the first time. And I suspect it's not going to look back, um, particularly as we're seeing the sales that have occurred since the first of the year. Going forward, what uh, what's the next 10 years at Robinson? I mean, are we have you know new technology, new capabilities, yeah. new airframes, anything? Yeah. We're always evolving. We're always looking uh, uh, for what needs to, to happen. And, and I like the word evolve rather than, uh, um, you know, dramatic changes or anything. Because we want to keep improving the products that we have. Uh, as, you know, as I was talking earlier, switching from analog to digital. And obviously that allows us to keep adding uh, uh, avionics and other equipment. Uh, I think you're going to see more and more of the, uh, the SaaS systems. You know, the goal there is to try and get the prices and, and the cost down lower uh, so we can broaden the audience. We, you know, we don't want to build an elaborate or exotic, expensive helicopter. We want to try and, and take the technology that we, we have and, and lower the price and, and make it available for everybody. So we have a, a lot of work in, along those, uh, those categories. What is your opinion, your view of this electric e vertol type transportation well, and how it's, how it's being integrated yeah. into the, the helicopter industry? Uh, back in 2016, I was invited to an e vtol conference and I was told at that time that within three or four years, um, we would not be selling any more helicopters that it's going to be all EV tall and that we need to switch. We evaluated it very seriously and, and looked at it and I would absolutely agree that there's been stunning um, advancements in battery technology and things going along, but we also concluded that the helicopter and the fact that it's operating at, at max, you know, pretty much max RPM, max throttle, um, it uses a, a tremendous amount of in, in energy and that really we just didn't think it was there yet. We've talked to all the experts and everybody uh, uh, on where it's going and I still think even today, now as you fast forward, you know, six years, that we're still a ways out. But when it occurs, uh, we're more than happy and you've seen, you know, obviously you've been down to tier one and some of these other industries where they have um, been able to, to put a uh, battery in a helicopter, and we're more than willing to do do that when the time comes. We just think it's a little bit a ways off. So in the meantime, what we're focusing on is autopilot SaaS systems, trying to make the, the aircraft simpler to operate, um, and the things that'll be uh, useful, whether or not, you know, what whatever kind of power plant you choose to put in the aircraft. Supply chain, how has that impacted, I mean, between COVID, and then here we see the, the not so much anymore, but the lineup of freighters offshore. What's the supply chain done to Robinson Helicopters and your ability to move aircraft? It's obviously been challenging. I think it's challenging for everybody uh, as it goes on, but it's not something that we, we haven't dealt with before. Um, we actually tend to carry higher inventories. So the irony or the ironic thing was the first couple years of COVID, we really weren't that impacted. Um, but then as vendors started missing delivery dates, as you started having issues there, yeah, it, it became uh, this last year or so, we've really felt it on there. Uh, so go forward from here, what are the challenges for Robinson Helicopters and maybe for the industry as a whole? Well, I think, I mean, growth itself right now is very strong, and I just see that for the next uh, three to five years. Uh, I think there's a tremendous opportunity all over the world. How large is the global Robinson fleet now? We're over uh, 13,000, and I'm not sure when we're going to hit 14, but we're not that far off uh, aircraft that are flying. And, you know, one of the amazing things about our products, we have R-22s that were you know, what we built in the 80s, and they're still flying. And as long as you overhaul them and, and take proper maintenance, you, know, you can uh, maintain them. Like Robinson TV here. It, yeah, isn't it? I mean, that's it's, it's, it is actually really nice to be to be talking to you on this while we're flying because um, this is what it's all about. You know, it's not about sitting behind the desk and, and you, you think about these moments when you're down on the ground, but when you're actually up there and you're enjoying uh, the uniqueness of a, of a helicopter and what it can do 
it, it is phenomenal on there. Yeah, do you ever take the opportunity to just go fly just to enjoy it? You know, take your kids flying yeah. or just to go enjoy the aircraft? Yeah, that's what I've been doing for the last month. And actually, I took my, my daughter and I went, I don't know, two weekends ago and flew all around L.A. and things. In flying, to me, the most fun is when you do cross country. Uh, when you go, you know, you have a destination, and I have obviously I've flown to Canada, I've flown to, to to the East Coast several times, and particularly if there's another helicopter that's with you, if you're doing a flight of two or a flight of three, uh, there is there's just something about it, uh, and especially seeing people at the smaller airports and the smaller locations. It's just a wonderful environment uh, on there, and you really do get to, to see the world, you know, in a big easy chair. And <laughs> it is nice when you look, you know, in a car, you can wonder what's on the other side of a hill, but when you're in a helicopter, you don't wonder. You just say, you know what, let's go over there and check it out. Go take a look. Yeah, so that's what you do. Frank was never into and, and always taught us very hard. It's like the, the goal here, especially if you're in aviation, is, is not to make money. The, the goal here is to, to try and expand the marketplace, to figure out places where, you know, don't go where everybody else has been. Try and develop products um, that can serve a new and a different market. Try and bring the cost down. Try and widen that, that audience. You know, clearly each of our helicopters, we could raise the price of them and still, still do quite well and sell them and maybe have a, a higher short-term profitability but it, it reduces the market size, it doesn't increase it. So we've always tried to be the Henry Ford concept, you know, where we're looking really hard at our products and saying, hey, how can we simplify it? How can we reduce the cost? How can we make it easier so we can actually lower the price or at least keep the price the same um, so that we can expand the market? And that's what we choose to do. And as we, as we look forward, and I know you've asked me about different products and things are going forward, uh, that's where we're looking. And, it is kind of interesting on each of the products that we've ever built. The market's kind of told us what, what is needed and, and where we want to go with that. 